Hello, and welcome to Independent Lifestyles, a show of the Aging and Disability Resource Center of Sheboygan County. With me today, I have Luann Travis with Sharon F. Richardson Community Hospice and Jane Brill of Generations in Plymouth. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thanks. Let's start out with Luann. Um, let's give us a little bit of background of Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice. Sure, sure. Um, I am the coordinator of community engagement for Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice. Um, when I became the coordinator of community engagement, my kids said, what does that mean? And I said, I engage with the community. <laughs> and they said, well, that helped. But really, I provide that education and advocacy in the community for end of life opportunities and conversations. And so we educate about the services that are available, um, you know, when uh, we have end of life um, needs. Um, Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice is entering its 13th year. 2007, we opened our doors. And truly, it is um, a love story um, between Joe and Sharon Richardson. And um, Sharon uh, battled breast cancer for many years. And then when, um, uh, recovery and cure was not going to be in the cards for her, then she wanted to leave a legacy and she wanted to leave a gift to the community. And um, her oncologist whispered in her ear that she, he had always wanted a hospice center and kind of big ask, right? And um, Joe said, I promise, I promise I'll get it built with the help of the community. So it's through community dollars, uh, blended funding that in 2007, the hospice center was built. And um, Joe kept his promise, and that's why we say that our mission is our promise. It's our promise to provide compassionate care and quality of life to all those in need. And that's their legacy. And we are a nonprofit, and that means that with our nonprofit status, that means we are uh, valued by the community, we're supported on all levels, and also uh, it allows us to have a charitable mission. And our charitable mission is we don't turn anybody away, ever, you know, uh, regardless of your ability to pay. Uh, we, we always find, through our patient care fund, a way of helping to make sure that you get the needs that you need. So that's us in a nutshell. And the beautiful hospice center is located um, on Highway 20, right off of Highway 28 in Sheboygan Falls. Okay. Um, and that's the center, but then you also have, um, your staff that goes into the home as well providing care, correct? correct? Correct, so we do provide hospice services and we also provide palliative care. For those times that we need some comfort care, we need support um, and we are not ready or for hospice services or maybe we don't qualify, but we need that extra support. And you're right, we have a beautiful center on Highway um, 28 and most people associate us with the center. And, and, and there is this um, challenge to get people to understand that you don't have to come to the center to per get hospice services or palliative care. We are out in the home. About 95% of the families that we serve are in their homes or they're at facilities. Um, the center is for that 24 hour skilled nursing when there's extra attention that needs to be, to be given. So, yeah. Great, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And Jane. Uh, from Generations in Plymouth. Mm. So give us a little bit of uh, background and explanation of some of the um, wonderful activities you have going on at Generations in Plymouth. Of course. So Generations is an intergenerational community center and a lot of people wonder what does intergenerational mean? It takes into account from birth all the way up to, uh, yesterday we had someone celebrate their 102 birthday. Wow. So yep, she comes to exercise class every day. So we had cake and everything. So uh, it's, it's every generation that walks through our doors that we are trying to engage in overall well-being through education sessions, through exercise, through community programs. Um, Generations, again, is a community nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So in, Back in the 90s, there was a group of people that got together and thought it'd be great to do an intergenerational center. At the time, Plymouth was looking for a different location for their senior center, and the Here We Grow Daycare was also looking for a new facility because they were growing as well. 
So the entities got together with a few other nonprofits and did the fundraising, worked with the city to get some funding. Um, they got a community block grant and a lot of community support from individuals as well as businesses and Generations was built. It's a beautiful community center located on County Trunk E in Shibor I mean, sorry, in Plymouth. And um, they, you know, we do everything from exercise classes every day through educational programs. We have a restaurant, Piccadilly, um, which serves great food from 11 to 2 every day, but they also cater different events, um, parties, retirement parties, um, sports banquets. We have weddings at our facilities. So we also host many events um, for private events as well as public events, company picnics. Um, and then we're a nonprofit hub, which is really cool. So we have the Family Resource Center. We have the ADRC. We are the home of the Plymouth Meal Site. And we have Safe Harbor has an office in our location, as well as the Plymouth Adult Community Center. And then, of course, we have Growing Generations, which is a daycare from birth to through 4K. And then we have the Head Start program. So we have children all the way up to age 12 in our building, usually on any given day, 85 to 100 kids um, when there's no school, up to 120 that are interacting and engaging with the other community members that are there every day. So it's a very vibrant center and there's always things going on, which is just my favorite part so about truly the truly playing towards the um, mission of intergenerational. Yep, intergenerational and well-being of the community and building those relationships that make our community stronger through the understanding of, you know, the younger generations to the older generations. Wonderful, which is a great segue into the reason uh, that we're here today, ladies, and that is to talk about the program series coming up for the second year in a row, correct? Mm -hmm. Inspiring the conversation, think, talk, and act. And um, Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice has brought together partners within the community to present this program series, um, which includes Generations, mm -hmm. uh, the Aging and Disability Resource Center, which is through the county, obviously, um, Embrace Care Management, and the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. So let's talk a little bit about that, um, Luann. <laughs> um, what was the inspiration for these educational programs uh, to bring them to the community? Ah, sure. So, like you said, it's the second year for Inspiring the Conversation. Um, Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice, we, we serve as um, the backbone and um, the foundation for this. However, again, we've been saying the word community, community. Community means collaboration. And we understand that we need to collaborate and we want to collaborate with the organizations that you just said, Generations, Embrace Care Management, Sheboygan Senior Activity Center, and ADRC, because we believe we have a very similar mission in serving especially an aging population. And so we were inspired first by national statistics and also by our own experiences in providing hospice services is that when we look at end of life, I say opportunities. I don't say end of life needs. I say opportunities. We look at, we can't just say end of life opportunities is when you are dying and you need hospice. We have to look further and earlier down the road, earlier to these conversations that should be having about how I define quality of life. So the national statistics are showing us that every day 10,000 people are roughly turning 65 years old. The statistics show us that by 2030, our aging population will outnumber even our children's age, okay? When we look at how the statistics are of people who are now going down their healthcare journey and getting to disease management or aging management and then dying, and we don't even wanna say that, when we look at that, we find out that people haven't even had conversations about how they want that managed and what is quality of life. They haven't had the conversations with their doctors. They haven't had the conversations with their families. So what we're finding now when we transition into what our experiences are 
as um, hospice providers is that people come to us not, not conversation ready sometimes. And then there's undue stress and there's undue conflict or there's undue kind of suffering that some of these things didn't have to happen and be shell shocked. And like somebody who just said yesterday when I was at Early Bird Rotary, is like I felt I was hit over the head and blindsided. But if we have earlier conversations and we start looking at what does it mean to have a, you know, my quality of life? What does a good day look like to me? What does comfort care mean to me? What are some things I absolutely do not want and some things I think I do want? So that's what's inspiring us. The thing that I look at is we can all point to things that we have conversations about our entire life, right? We had conversations about our careers. We taught our kids that what do you want to be when you grow up? And we started looking at dreaming and planning and career planning. That conversation didn't take place when I woke up senior year and for the first time somebody asked me, what do you want to be now? We talked about them early, 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 so it was embedded. Parenting, how do we want to parent? So it's almost a shift in culture and how we handle um, that education and those conversations and, and yeah. really reducing, in a sense, almost the stigma associated with talking about end of life and how important that is. Yeah. So um, we can all make an impact um, in having those conversations with our family members. And it's not just the stigma, it's the fear. Yeah. yeah. It's just the fear. It's I mean, kind of a taboo topic is what yeah. it always has been, and it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. It is like, it's not so like, when is the right time topic? You know, we yes. could sit and have a conversation about that and a workshop about that too. When's the right time? You know, is it when all the kids are home for Christmas? Yeah, I don't think that's the right time. It doesn't feel good. Is it when they're all home for their cousin's wedding? You know what I mean? We all in our brain right. want to know, but the right time needs to be something that happens, like you said, taboo, meaning it shouldn't be taboo. We should be able to bring it up right. and talk about it without it feeling icky or remorse or a downer, right? Exactly. So when we look at Sheridan S. Richardson Community Hospice and we look at how we want to look at our broadening, broadening how we can help and support in our community, not only our partners, but individually and, and change the fabric of how we approach. Get rid of that taboo, right? Mm -hmm. Make it more comfortable. Right. And that's part of what um, we hope to do with the inspiring <laughs> yeah. the conversation. Yes. So let's start talking about a, you know those programs that are coming up. Sure. So um, the first program is Fact or Fiction, Navigating the Use of Morphine in Long-Term um, Illness. And uh, that program you're actually doing on February 25th in Manitowoc, which you, uh, Sharon S. Richardson um, now has an office there and is serving uh, the Manitowoc community as well. And then in Sheboygan County at Generations um, on February 27th. So let's talk a little bit about what that program is going to look like. Sure. If people attend that, what will they expect to hear? Sure. So when we look at being conversation ready, we look at also trying to define our quality of life. And so we want to inspire informed conversations. So informed means sometimes we had found out through our own service providers and out in the community that there's this kind of issue about morphine and the use of morphine. Um, and there's a stigma about the use of morphine. And, and is it just that I'll get signed up for hospice and all of a sudden they'll come in with the morphine? Or I don't want the morphine? Or why are we giving morphine? So we look at that whole culture we have around morphine because they are associo associated with opioids, right? Mm -hmm. It is an opioid. And, and what happens emotionally when we're caring for our loved ones and it's medicated, that concept of medicated. So we will be talking, we will have um, the um, Krista Wilson from Lakeshore Community Health um, Care and that serves, that clinic serves Sheboygan and Manitowoc. So Lakeshore Community Healthcare is a community um, um, healthcare center that serves the underinsured or the non-insured, but they also 
serve the insured. They would love you to be a, a choice for them. And Krista Wilson is the uh, pharmacist. And she's going to talk about um, some of the, the, the issues and some of the fears the around, around morphine. Correct. And some of the issues that we have that from the very beginning going through the healthcare center, where does this all stem from? You know, mm. and so she's going to talk about some of the myths, meaning, oh, if I use morphine, then, you know, I'll become an addict, you know, those type of things. And then she, we're going to transition the conversation into now that we've got an understanding of that, then we're going to talk to Amy Clark, who is the nurse practitioner at Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice, and Jen Hasse, who's the social worker. And they're going to talk about now when somebody's transitioning to end of life care, some of these myths that we've been carrying with us do come with us, you know, even during that time. And then how is it that morphine and the use of morphine is very different when our body is at end of life versus when our body is um, not. And so we'll, we'll unpack some of those things. So that program will be in Manitowoc on February 25th. Mm -hmm from 6 until 7.30 um, at your Calumet Avenue um, Location. address, mm -hmm. uh, 4411. And then in Sheboygan County on the 27th, it's actually being offered twice. Um, yeah. In Plymouth, from at Generations, from 2 until 3.30. And then in Sheboygan, um, at the Health and Human Services Building, from 6 until 7.30. Um, so we welcome people, people to join in. It's open to the public. Um, and then the program series continues on March 19th with taking the mystery out of palliative care. What is the difference between palliative care and hospice care? And wow, I have to say that uh, in my role um, as uh, the community, um, as, as the caregiver coordinator, I hear a lot from the caregivers really wanting to know what that uh, difference is. And Jane, are you able to explain to us briefly what that difference yes, is? I yeah. <laughs> you, Luann, feel free to jump in on anything that I missed. So, you know, I think through the efforts of Sharon Richardson Hospice, the community has become more familiar with hospice care than it has, but the palliative care is still new. and. Um, it's great that we have these teams that will come out and you know provide palliative care so palliative care is putting together a care team when you have been diagnosed with a serious illness so cancer um, congestive heart failure alzheimer's parkinson's ms so along with the doctors and the specialists that you're seeing you have a palliative care team so it could be doctors nurses social workers that make sure that they're addressing your needs when it comes to any pain that you may have, any sort of stress, um, and any you know other sort of comfort things that you may need. But that's done along with the curative treatments and therapies that you're going through. So it's a serious illness, but you're still trying to cure that illness, or you know still keep your quality of life and keep going on with your daily activities, and. The fact that you know you can be diagnosed with a serious condition, but have people that support you and your caregivers. So it's not just for you, but also for your family. Because you have your stress that you might be going through if you're the one diagnosed, but so does your family. How do they provide the best care for you? How do they deal with maybe your moods that you might have um, with the stress of now, how do I cope with this? How is my life gonna change? How do I go on? So really making that distinction um, between palliative care and hospice. And hospice is, you know, usually you're not having that curative treatment and therapy anymore. It's, you know, it's more towards the end of your life. And palliative, you could still have a long life with palliative care. You know, even if you get through some of the rough parts and it could be, you know, you have that care when you need it. So if you're doing great, maybe you don't need to meet with your palliative care team. But if all of a sudden you have a relapse, then it's a good time to, you know, you know that they're there for you. So right. I think explaining that difference is really important because it is being um, 
promote it a lot more. We had somebody recently in our office who had a family member who was very sick and they talked about palliative care and she came in and she was like, Jane, what's palliative care? I don't even know what it is. And I thought, oh, I wish we would have this session right now that she could go and really, you know, understand what palliative care is for her as well as for her family member. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly true, Jane. You know, it, it, this series wants to educate people mm -hmm. Um, again, our healthcare journey is all the way, all the way through. And sometimes I think um, what, what we have a difficulty communicating is exactly what you said, Jane, is that I always feel like it's all or nothing kind of thing. Like I feel like I'm in treatment and I'm trying to manage all of this, this disease process plus some of the symptoms that come with it in treatment. And then, but, but the hospice is not something maybe I'm ready to talk about yet or even turn to. There is a whole service called palliative care. So again, um, our nurse practitioner, Amy Clark, she will be presenting along with our social worker, Nicole Dannenberg, um, about those ins and outs of palliative care, the benefits, how it benefits the, the loved one, how it benefits the caregivers, how it even benefits facilities, because maybe my loved one is in a facility. Can I still get palliative care when somebody's, my loved one's in a facility? So again, um, it's all of these benefits and all these conversations to help, you know, to help give clarity, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> you know, we all want to try to work toward clarity. And the palliative care session will be on March 19th, uh, again twice, offering in Plymouth uh, at Generations from 2 until 3.30, and then in the evening in Sheboygan at the Health and Human Services Building downtown from six until 7.30. Yeah. So thanks, and then we know that um, from last year uh, that there's a, always a, a featured speaker that Correct. wraps up the series. So on April 23rd, um, there will, at the Kohler Memorial Theater, uh, there will be a featured speaker, uh, the conversation ready because when it comes to talking end of when it comes to end of life, talking matters. So it kind of wraps up everything we've been um, kind of discussing sure. today. And tell us a little bit about that and the featured speaker. Sure. So Penny Webster comes to us from the Conversation Project. You can Google the Conversation Project, okay. and you will see a, a wonderful national website, and it's a national collaboration that um, has been identified that we aren't having these conversations soon enough. So when we say be conversation ready, that's not just a Sheboygan County Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice belief. It's a national um, uh, movement to get people to talk more through many different venues. Um, sometimes um, people are hosting um, death over dinner parties where you are coming to dinner with like-minded people that do want to have an opportunity to talk in a very approachable way. They have um, also conversation starter kits, which is their main thing, is about how is it I first think about, again, think, talk, act. How do I think about these conversations? And then how do I talk about them, act them? So Patty Webster, she is the person that is in charge here of their community engagement. She's flying to us. She's going to give the conversation. She's going to be inspiring. She's going to be approachable. And she's going to be like, wow, that was really cool to go to, as opposed to, ooh, I don't know if I should go because they're going to talk about you know, dying and stuff. She's going to give many examples about how can we have our own conversations that fits me, my personality, that fits my family, that fits my friend. We don't how to kind cutter. of customize those conversations and yeah. feel comfortable. And approachable. Again, we want to inspire people to have the conversations so that you can leave going, I think I got a few little things that I can work with here. And even the drive home, if it helps with the drive home to say, what'd you think about that? Well, oh, this is what I thought. Hmm, do you think we should be doing something more? Talk about this more? It really does start like a mustard seed, right? I mean, it does truly start by planting seeds, planting seeds. But if we start them earlier, hopefully things start sprouting, you know. And Patty Webster, um, she's delightful and she's wonderful. Um, I've been a part of many of her webinars. 
and she does a nice job of facilitating these conversations. And um, we will be at the Kohler Memorial Theater, and people will say, well, what? That's the, like the Kohler High School, right? Get to Kohler, get to the Kohler High School. On all of these um, locations, you'll see identifying us. There'll be plenty of people on site to help direct you of where is this and where am I going? And so um, we'll, we'll, we'll be there to make sure you get to the right place. And if anybody has um, any questions, they can always call uh, Sharon S. Richardson um, on, Generations, your, on your website mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. as well, correct? On the websites, Facebook pages. So kind of know that, that things are out there. Um, There's an email address on there that you can email for a reservation. You can call for a reservation. We ask for reservations just because we want to know how many chairs to have. Exactly. Ready. <laughs> I always say that. Do you need a, if they say, do you need a reservation? I'll say, well, it's kind of like, do I plan for 20 or do I plan for 50? You know, you kind of want to know yeah. that. But this is all free, correct? It's all free. All and free I'm glad you public. quick wrap that in there. It is all free due to the generous um, donations of many companies. When you um, see our flyer or see this advertised, you will see all of the companies and corporations and church, we have a church there that have helped collectively put funds together. When we called our partners to the table, we didn't call them to the table to ask for funding. We truly called them to the table for partnership so that we can all get, get the word out and, and, and inspire conversations about what a good day looks like to me. <laughs> Wonderful information. And what is the general number to call for that reservation at Sharon S. Richardson? Um, the hospice centers, I'm sorry, I don't have the number oh. off the top of my head, only because also we have our own individual extension number. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I don't I, have our you number. You know, but I've called you. Yeah. And now I look <laughs> at it on the sheet and I say it's 920-467-1800. right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at 1800. Sometimes I give, um, I used to work in a uh, family resource center. Sometimes my head wants to come out with that number. And I go, no, 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 wait. <laughs> well, you don't call yourself, right? So no, that, it's, that it's makes true. sense. I don't, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, this is a wonderful topic, inspiring the conversation. Yeah. Um, this is Lisa Hurley of Independent Lifestyles from the Aging and Disability Resource Center, making your life better today.